It's very nice to meet you. My name is Choppy and this is my collector's channel. And this is actually my very first video. And as Sonic the Hedgehog was my very first collection and obsession, I thought it would only be fitting to make it my first video subject. Today we'll be focusing on one set in particular, which is the Sonic Adventure 1 blush set, which, let me tell you, it was held track now for 15 years straight. 15 years straight, I searched every single day Sonic in different languages, on different websites, every single hour because I was so obsessed of tracking this thing down and trust me, it was hell. These plush could only be obtained by winning the Sega UFO Catcher Machines, which is that claw machine that goes But as you can tell from the title, these were released to promote the Sonic Adventure Dreamcast release in Japan. And there were actually two releases of these. One, of course, was the Japanese one, which is all of them. And then America had a limited release, which I believe was sold on the Sega America website. I could be wrong, Sega Europe. America only had five plushes released, which are the easiest ones to get. And by easiest, I mean they're still hell, but not as hell as the other ones. <laughs> they were, um... Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Big, and a neutral child. And like I said, it took me 15 years to track these down, and after 15 years, I am very excited to show the entire set. Oh, sorry. This is my Sonic self. She will be joining me in the videos that are related to Sonic. And without further ado, let us begin. First up is none other than Sonic. This was the Japanese release, and he's in pretty much perfect condition. I was very happy and surprised about it. You can see his tag is pretty much unharmed. There's that little bend, but oh well. And the vinyl isn't that bad compared to most I've seen. I mean, there's a little bit on the back, but otherwise, pretty much perfect. And. This plush, let me tell you, it was the easiest one to find for so long. And then a certain individual by the name of Pat Mac came along and hyped it up. I'm just kidding, Pat Mac and I are friends. I have three releases of this plush. This is the first one, which is a Japanese one. And then I have another Japanese one, which I will show in a second. And I also have an American release one, but unfortunately I could not locate it in time for the video. It is somewhere in storage because we just renovated my house and I had to put all my collection in storage. And I have yet to locate the box he's in, but as soon as I do I'll post on Twitter a picture. He, this is the second of the Japanese releases I have. He was in a lot that I won on Yahoo Japan, which I was winning it for the for the Sonic Adventure Eggman, and I was planning to sell this one, but then once I had it in my hands, he is the cutest thing. Okay, he is he is squishy. I don't know if you can if you can tell, but he is he has the squishiest body and it's just so floppy and he's so cute. And at first I thought it was just oh he's just under stuff, but then Right before I started recording this video, I inspected, and it looks like he has had surgery. Um, let me see if I can get this on camera. Um, you can see a little, like, s seam line that's not really even. And then if you compare it to this Sonic, I hope I can get this on camera, right? So these two are going to remain in my collection as bros for life, and I hope to find their triplets soon. <laughs> Okay, and before we continue, I just want to apologize because you might see an occasional hair or two on the plush. That is because I have nine cats. This is unavoidable. They don't get near my plush, but the, the occasional hair flies around and I lint roll them. And I tried to get every hair off of them before the video, but it might be visible and I apologize. Anyway, let us continue to tales. This plush I hunt down for so long. Well, I had a childhood friend, and he had this tails, and I was so jealous of it. I was, I just thought it was the most beautiful plush in the world, and he would always bring it over, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I wish that was mine. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and I, let's just say that it had a bad ending. 
one day he just comes over and is like, Oh, my dog tore it up. And oh, good lord. <laughs> okay, let's move on. As you can see, he's pretty much perfect. I'm very happy with him. I don't see any flaw in the vinyl except occasional just little chip here and there. And it's a perfect face. And I say perfect face because I have two of them. One is Japanese release and one is the American release. And you can see that they are going to be entirely different looking. This is the second one I have. And as you can see, he has a little derpy face. He's still adorable, but he just has a little derpy. I don't know if it's the actual blushes pattern's fault or not, or if it was just not taken care of very well, because I ordered Tails of the friggin' hair. I've ordered him along with Sonic, Knuckles, and Big from the same seller on eBay from America. The other three, they arrived okay. Tails, however, was filthy. And even to this day, this this was like 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, I can still smell the little smoke remnants on So as soon as he came here, he had to have a bath by tumbling in the washer. And he's not, he's not visibly dirty, I just think the only problem with him is that the, the smoke smell might not go away. I've had this issue before with plush that it just seems to be embedded in them. I hope that someday it airs out, but I'm not counting on it. Now, this is a quiz. Which one of these do you think is the Japanese release? I got the eBay one first, the other one I won on Yahoo Japan, and when I first got the eBay one, I was discouraged at first, because I was like, what if that tail splash in my childhood was not as perfect as I thought it was, and maybe I just had an idealized version of my head. And when I got the other one, I was very relieved. For all these years, I've gotten it wrong. I always thought one was the Japanese one, and one was the American one. I thought the Japanese one was the perfect one, because he came from Japan, and he was perfect. But the thing is, it is the exact opposite. The Japanese one, that I thought was the Japanese one, is actually the American one. And the American one is actually the Japanese one. <laughs> so... It's very interesting. This is the best Knuckles plush ever. He doesn't have any special story or anything though, so... Yes, I know. Sad. But I still love him. He is the best Knuckles plush ever, and... I'm so glad I have him in my collection. Next up is Big. Poor, poor Big. Okay, so... I got him from the same seller as Tails. And Sonic and Knuckles and... In the Tails segment, I said that Tails arrived the worst. I was wrong, because I forgot completely about Big. He arrived without the fishing... The fishing rod is decimated. His the vinyl on his shoes was like, oh... Eh. I did my best to clean it, but it's not perfect. And the little black areas of him, that fabric is horrible, and it gets hair on it like nothing else I've ever had. So I tried my very best to get every, everything off of it, but it just, but it just keeps coming back. This is the American release, and I really need to get another version of this big flush that is not decimated. But this one has always been special to my heart because he's just. He's just all broken up, and he's a still a good boy. <laughs> it's not one of my priorities though, because to me the most important thing is having the actual plush so I can say I have a complete set of something. And his condition isn't horrible, and you can't tell about the fishing rod unless you look for it, so... I'm happy with him, and I hope he's happy with me. Next up is the Neutral Chow, and this was the very first Sonic Adventure plush I got. Not this one though, I have an American one, and unfortunately though, like the American Sonic I have, it is somewhere in storage and I cannot locate it in time, so I apologize. But this one does not have a tag, but it's still pretty much... He doesn't have the tag, but when compared to my American release one, he is the equivalent of perfect. And I say this because the American one was actually my childhood one, so I was not the best at taking care of it. When I was little, I wanted the chow to hug me, and so I cut the strings on the pan so that so they're detached from that. And I was a bigger moron by cutting the wings, this little thread um, keeping the wings on the body, so that it could fly more. 
and that was a mistake. Oh, and I lied, I actually got this one from the, uh, wait. This is not the Japanese one. It's from the same Seller's of Tales one, I forgot to include the Chow when I was naming them. This is the American release one. So we are learning a lot today, both you and me. Next up we have one of my favorite plush ever, which is the Knight's Chow. He's beautiful, with the tag is a little sunburnt, but he's so beautiful. He was one of my grails, not the grail, but he was like right up there with a certain someone that's later in this video. And the airbrushing is gorgeous, just everything is gorgeous. I don't remember exactly where I got him. I'm, I'm leaning more towards eBay, but it could have been Yao Japan, so I don't know, but I don't care. He's mine. <laughs> I finally have him. <laughs> Next up is Amy, and she's also one of my favorite plush because she is just so cool. And she's one of the rare ones in the set. She has her tag. And I got her from a private seller on this forum called Video Game Memorabilia Museum. I don't know if the site is still functional. I know that Nightram, the owner, still does things online, but I haven't checked the forums in years, so they may still be online, they may not be. But it used to be the best place to look for plush that wasn't an auction or web shop because that was where all the collectors congregated and you could just say, hey, I'm looking for blah blah blah, and then somebody message you and say, I have blah blah blah. That's what happened with Amy. <laughs> Next up is Eggman. And let me tell you, I was not prepared for how difficult it would be to track this thing down. He was act out of all my Sonic collections, which is, I have the complete set of Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic the Fire, Sonic the Fire's Keychain, Sonic X. He was the very last plush to complete my collections, and I won him by a sheer miracle. <laughs> it was on Yao Japan, I got him along with that fluffy Sonic, and that fluffy Sonic, the squishy one, but he was in a set with that Sonic. And I was like, holy crap, he finally showed up. I'm just gonna bid the crap out of this and figure out a way to pay for it. <laughs> and the auction was fierce. Apparently someone else had also been tracking him down and it was a battle to the death. The auction was the longest lasting auction I've ever participated in. Because on the of Japan, when you bid, it gets extended another five minutes. So me and that other person were just bidding, 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 bidding. And it was going so high, and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do, what do I do, this is... I didn't think Eggman would go for this much money. But thankfully, a miracle happened, and I still don't quite understand what happened, if, it, if there's like a time limit on how long an auction can be extended, or if the seller ended it early, which I do not understand what the purpose of that would be whatsoever. Luckily, I happened to be the highest bidder at the time, because even though it had minutes left, the auction just mysteriously ended. While I'm thankful that happened, I really do feel sorry for the other bidder because, as you're going to see in the next plush, I have a story to tell about auction hells, and if you are watching this video, person who bid on the Eggman, I am so sorry, <laughs> and I hope you have one now, and if you don't have one yet, I would be happy to help. So, that is all of them. Or is it? We are going to have to put the gloves on because the next plush is both a legend and a now that my gloves are on, I am ready to touch what is both the holiest of holy grails and the most fragile of fragile fragiles. For it is the man himself, E102 Gamma. First of all, let me explain the purpose of the gloves. Gamma is the most fragile plush I have ever, ever seen. My theory is that the reason he's so rare is because most of them did not even survive. My reasons for this are, one, the fact it was in the crane machine, and this material is so fragile that when the crane machine locked on with the claw, it would probably scrape the paint right off. Then there's the fact that I have to wear gloves whenever I handle him, because you will get, you will get these little particles on you, and the reason that I held Gamma with this little yellow spot is because the yellow is the part that least peels off. And that is pretty much the only safe spot where you can pick him up. The safe way to carry Gamma, in my opinion, is by this. The worst parts are the red and black. Maybe even the silver, but the black 
is probably the worst. Let's just say that this entire plush is a hazard. And this is his tag. Oh yeah, this, this is also a good way to hold him. Not hold hold him because it will probably rip off of his gun, which I do not want to risk whatsoever, but this is not the only part of him that is not made out of vinyl. I think. Yeah, I think he is. Now the story on this guy is the crowning moment of being a collector, really. It's incredible and it was worth all the pain. <laughs> so when I was little, I would search eBay even though I couldn't afford any of these amazing plush. And the Gamma one was just like, oh my gosh, it's legendary, look how beautiful he is! And of course I didn't bid on that one, but from that point on, I would look for years and years and years for one to pop up for sale, and I was going to be prepared for it, and I was prepared for it. The thing I was not prepared for, and could not have even imagined to prepare for, however, was the technical difficulties that would arise like a curse. So then, years later, an eBay auction pops up. It is Gamma. Holy crap. So I'm gung-ho on this thing. I'm like, I'm going to win this no matter what and I'm, I've been preparing for all these years, I'm going to win this. I was in the lead. This, uh, the, this other bidder was just as fierce though. We kept going back and, back and forth, back and forth. Then something happens. As I am about to put in my final bid, which was a lot more than the current bid, to like seal the deal so the other bidder couldn't catch up in time, the power goes out. The power went out and I lost the auction, and I know it's a, I know this is a, like a stretch to say, but it was traumatizing. <laughs> I saved for all these years, and the Gamma pops up. I am gung-ho about getting Gamma. I had the money to keep going, and I had the money to do a final huge bid. But then the universe says, nope, not today, and then just turns off the internet, and I lost Gamma. I cried. I cried. And that was probably the only time I've ever cried from an auction. Uh, that just completely devastated me. And so that just fueled the obsession. From He was a grail at that time, but then he became the holy grail. That is when my everyday searches turned into every hour searches in different languages, on different websites, every day, every hour. About close to a decade passes. Yes, gammas do not show up. I have learned this. I'd always kept my head up like, don't worry, that is not the only gamma in the world. You will find another gamma and you will treasure that gamma even more now that you've gone on this quest for him. And then one shows up. First, let me say that this gamma was the one that was on display at Summer of Sonic, and I will soon tell you the reason why. Summer of Sonic was a convention in England made for Sonic fans by Sonic fans, and one of the runners of it was a man by the name of Adam Tuff, aka T-Bird. I knew he was the one that won it because after I lost that eBay auction, he showed up in Summer of Sonic, and Adam Tuff is the one that brought all of his collection to display the little cases. And I could tell by the tag and condition and stuff that it was the exact same gamma, so that was just like the ultimate punch in the face. But anyway, what happened was, I don't know why Adam Tuff decided to sell gamma, but he did. He put it on eBay, and I jumped for that. It was the exact same gamma that has tormented me for all these years, the exact same one, and I ended up with him in the end, and that is just beautiful. And Adam Tuff is a really great guy. I don't worry. I'm not saying anything bad about him when I if bidding is a survival to the fittest. And he beat me that time, but it ended up working out because even though I didn't get for the price he was back then, that journey to get him made him all the more special to me. And I have been so careful with him. I have he's my ultimate treasure really and he can he he has his own glass case throne that is locked, that is temperature controlled, and he is, I hope he's a very happy boy because he's my treasure and I am so glad and so thankful to finally have him because I was starting to lose hope and I just love him.
So that is the entire Sonic Adventure collection. Unfortunately, this podium is not big enough to, to have all of them for a group photo for the end of the video. I did take a quick picture for Twitter though before I started, which has all the Sonic Adventure plushes in the transportation box to come to the studio. And you can see Gamma in his cute little VIP cubicle. I completely forgot to say at the beginning of the video, but this plush is made by Vega, Vega, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he is an incredibly talented plush artist. And he brought my character to justice like no other, completely poseable, and she is just so cute. And I highly, highly recommend you follow his Twitter, because all of his plush are incredible. And I will include the link in the bio of this video, so you can see for yourself. Before I get to the final part of this video, let me put Gamma in his little cubicle of safety. So, that's it for this set, but this is not going to be the only Sonic video. There are still going to be videos on the Sonic Adventure 2 complete set, Sonic, Sonic the Fire's complete set, Sonic the Fire's KJ complete set, Sonic Gagas complete set, and then just miscellaneous ones I do not have the complete set for, like Sega World and stuff, but they're still cool enough to be in the video. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Collecting is an adventure that is different for each person, and I really hope you'll join me on mine. I would be so grateful. <laughs> Let's be friends, yo! You spin me 